The Vorta aliens stood stunned, mouths agape, as the ancient human temple's doors ground open with an echoing rumble, revealing technology millennia beyond their comprehension. Vincent Cox, rugged human archaeologist, shared a wide-eyed glance with Odin, the lead Vorta scientist. They both knew this discovery would forever alter the course of history for both their civilizations. Failure to uncover the temple's secrets was not an option. Vincent had been guiding Odin's team through the dense Peruvian jungle for days, searching for clues to humanity's past. The Nazca lines, sprawling ancient geoglyphs carved into the desert, had piqued Odin's interest the most. As they set up camp nearby, Vincent's equipment registered bizarre energy spikes from deep underground. We have to check this out, Vincent urged. His curiosity piqued. Odin, driven by a thirst for knowledge, agreed. They spent hours excavating, their excitement mounting with each shovel full of dirt. Finally, they hit something solid, a colossal stone door, covered in intricate carvings and pulsing with an otherworldly glow. Vincent reached out to touch it, his heart pounding. The door swung open with a hiss, revealing a cavernous chamber filled with tech beyond imagination. Holographic displays flickered to life, illuminating the awestruck faces of Vincent and Odin. Energy cores thrummed with power, casting an eerie blue light. In the center of the room, a massive star map shimmered, with Earth at its focal point. The implications were staggering. This chamber, hidden for eons, held the key to unlocking the secrets of humanity's true place in the cosmos. Suddenly an alarm blared, shattering the stunned silence. The door began to grind shut, ancient gears straining. Vincent and Odin, their instincts kicking in, leapt through the opening, just as the door slammed shut behind them, sealing away the chamber's secrets once more. They collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath, their minds reeling from what they'd just witnessed. One thing was certain. They couldn't let this discovery slip through their fingers. The fate of both their peoples hung in the balance. The race to unravel the mystery had only just begun. Back at the Vorta base camp, Vincent and Odin faced a wall of flickering holographic displays. The members of the Vorta High Council stared at them with stern expressions. This is preposterous, one council member stated flatly. Humans are a primitive species. They couldn't possibly have built such advanced technology. Vincent stepped forward. With all due respect, the evidence is clear. We've seen it with our own eyes. Another council member shook their head. Odin, your mission is to study the agricultural significance of the Nazca lines, not chase after wild theories. Focus on your assigned task. Odin glanced at Vincent, then back at the council. Yes, of course, we will continue our research as planned. As the holographic communication ended, Vincent turned to Odin. You can't seriously be giving up on this. Odin sighed. What choice do we have? The council has spoken. Vincent's eyes narrowed. We can't let this discovery slip away. We have to keep investigating, even if it means doing it in secret. Odin hesitated, then nodded. You're right, we can't ignore what we've found. That night they snuck out of the camp, their packs loaded with equipment. They made their way back to the hidden chamber, determined to uncover the truth. As they worked to reopen the door, they discovered a series of intricate puzzles and challenges. Each one seemed designed to test their intelligence, ingenuity, and physical prowess. Vincent took the lead, his human adaptability and problem-solving skills proving invaluable. Odin watched in amazement as Vincent navigated the challenges with ease. As they progressed deeper into the underground network, they found themselves in a vast labyrinth of tunnels and chambers. Each room contained more advanced technology and cryptic clues about Earth's past. Finally, they reached a central chamber, housing a massive holographic projector. As they approached, the projector flared to life, displaying a recorded message from an ancient human civilization. The message revealed a shocking truth. Humans had once possessed advanced technology and were part of a galactic community, but a cataclysmic event had forced them to hide their knowledge and revert to a simpler way of life. The recording also warned of an impending threat that could endanger both Earth and the galaxy as a whole. As the message ended, 
Vincent and Odin heard footsteps echoing through the tunnels. They froze, realizing they were not alone in their discovery. Vincent and Odin scrambled to take cover behind a large humming energy core as a squad of heavily armed Vorta soldiers stormed into the central chamber. The soldiers, clad in sleek black armor and wielding pulse rifles, fanned out to secure the area. Their leader, Commander Zal, strode in, his eyes scanning the ancient technology with a mix of awe and suspicion. Secure the artifacts and prepare for extraction, Zal barked, his voice echoing through the chamber. Vincent watched as the soldiers began to examine the holographic displays and energy cores, their movements precise and methodical. He turned to Odin, his voice a low whisper. They must have been sent by the High Council. They're going to take everything and bury the truth. Odin nodded grimly. We can't let that happen. As the soldiers continued their work, Zal approached the central holographic projector. He reached out, his fingers brushing against the control panel, and the projector flared to life once more. The ancient message played out, the warning about the impending threat filling the chamber. Zal's face contorted with a mixture of fear and anger as the message ended. Destroy it all, he ordered. We can't risk this information falling into the wrong hands. Vincent, his heart pounding, stepped out from behind the energy core. Wait, he called out, his hands raised in a gesture of peace. You can't destroy this place. The technology here could be the key to saving us all. Azal whirled around, his pulse rifle aimed squarely at Vincent's chest. You dare to lecture me, human? Your species is primitive, weak. The Vorta will handle this threat on our own. Odin, sensing the tension rising, stepped forward, his personal recording device held high. Commander Zal, I have recorded everything, including the ancient message and your plan to destroy this site. If you don't stand down, I will expose the truth to the entire galactic community. Zal's eyes narrowed, his grip on the rifle tightening. For a long moment the chamber was silent, the only sound the hum of the ancient technology. Finally Zal lowered his weapon, his voice tight with barely contained rage. Very well. We will leave the site intact and report our findings to the High Council. But mark my words, this is not over. As the soldiers filed out of the chamber, Vincent and Odin shared a look of relief tinged with determination. They knew that their discovery had only scratched the surface of the mystery surrounding the ancient human civilization and the looming threat. With renewed purpose, they delved deeper into the underground network, their minds racing with questions and possibilities. The answers they sought lay hidden in the labyrinth of tunnels and chambers, waiting to be uncovered. As Vincent and Odin ventured deeper into the underground labyrinth, their boots echoed through the ancient corridors. The air grew colder, and a sense of anticipation hung heavy around them. Suddenly, the narrow passage opened up into a cavernous space that took their breath away. Before them stretched a massive hangar bay, its walls lined with sleek, angular spacecraft. Each vessel bore the same intricate symbol they had seen in the central chamber, a testament to the advanced technology of the ancient human civilization. Odin ran his hand along the nearest ship's hull, marveling at the smooth metallic surface. These ships, have, they're operational, and far beyond anything the Vorta or humans have ever created. Excitement thrummed through their veins as they approached one of the larger ships. Vincent placed his palm on a glowing panel, and the ship's hatch hissed open, revealing a dimly lit interior. They stepped inside, their footsteps ringing on the metal floor. As they reached the ship's bridge, a holographic display flickered to life. An AI avatar materialized, its form shimmering with an ethereal blue light. It spoke in an ancient human language, the words foreign and lilting. Odin's translator struggled to decipher the message, spitting out garbled phrases. Vincent, however, felt a strange sense of familiarity wash over him. He stepped forward, his instincts guiding his words. We come in peace, he said, his voice steady. We seek to understand the purpose of these ships and the knowledge they hold. The AI's avatar pulsed, its light growing brighter. Slowly the ancient language shifted, morphing into something more recognizable. I have waited long for a worthy successor, the
the AI said, its voice echoing through the bridge. The ships before you hold the key to defending the galaxy against a great threat. Vincent and Odin exchanged a glance, their hearts pounding with the weight of the AI's words. The Avatar continued, but to claim this legacy, you must prove yourselves worthy. A series of trials awaits you, designed to test your intelligence, bravery and self-sacrifice. As the AI spoke, holographic images flashed across the display, scenes of an ancient human civilization at the height of its power, of great battles fought and won, of knowledge shared and peace maintained. But there were also images of destruction, of a powerful alien race that sought to conquer and destroy. The cataclysm that befell our civilization was caused by an enemy that sought to eliminate us and claim our technology for their own, the AI explained, its voice heavy with sorrow. We sacrificed everything to stop them, hiding our knowledge and ships to prevent them from falling into the wrong hands. Vincent and Odin listened intently, their minds racing with the implications of the AI's words. They knew that the fate of the galaxy rested on their shoulders, and they were determined to prove themselves worthy of the ancient human's legacy. As they prepared to face the first trial, a sense of purpose filled their hearts. They looked at each other, a silent understanding passing between them. They had come this far together, and they would see this through to the end, no matter the cost. The AI's avatar pulsed once more, its light casting an eerie glow across the bridge. Your journey begins now, it said, its voice fading into the shadows. May the wisdom and strength of the ancients guide you. Vincent and Odin stepped out of the ship, their minds buzzing with the knowledge they had gained. The hangar bay seemed to hum with energy, the ancient ships waiting for their new masters to claim them. They knew that the path ahead would be treacherous, filled with challenges and obstacles at every turn. But they also knew that they had each other, and the bond they had forged through their shared experiences would be their greatest strength. With a final look at the ships that held the key to the galaxy's future, they set off to face the first trial, ready to prove themselves worthy of the ancient human's legacy. As the final trial faded away, Vincent and Odin found themselves back on the bridge of the ancient spacecraft. The AI's avatar pulsed with an approving glow. You have proven yourselves worthy, it said, its voice resonating through the chamber. The knowledge and power of our civilization are now yours to wield. Vincent and Odin exchanged a look of triumph, tinged with the weight of responsibility. They quickly set to work, their fingers flying over the ship's control panels as they delved into its vast databases. The holographic displays flickered to life, revealing a dizzying array of star maps, technical schematics and historical records. Odin's eyes widened as he focused on a particular star map. Vincent, look at this, he said, his voice tight with excitement. There's an uncharted system marked with the same symbol we've seen throughout the underground network. Vincent leaned in, his gaze following Odin's gesture. The AI chimed in. That system was once home to a powerful artifact, capable of neutralizing the threat posed by the aggressive alien race that destroyed our civilization. A surge of determination coursed through Vincent's veins. Then that's where we need to go, he said his jaw set with resolve. If we can secure that artifact, we might have a chance at protecting the galaxy from whatever's coming. As they prepared to plot a course to the uncharted system, the ship's proximity alarms blared to life. The AI's avatar flickered, its voice urgent. Intruders detected in the hangar bay, Vorta military signatures. Vincent and Odin shared a look of alarm. Zell must have tracked us here. Odin said, his fingers already dancing across the control panel to bring the ship's defences online. Vincent held up his hands, his voice calm despite the tension crackling in the air. Zal, listen to me. We're all in danger. The artifact we're searching for could be the key to saving us all. Zal scoffed. You expect me to trust the word of a primitive human? The Vorta will seize this technology for ourselves and deal with any threats on our own terms. Vincent's eyes narrowed. Don't be a fool, Zal. We need to work together, now more than ever. Zal's finger tightened on the trigger. I won't ask again. Surrender or face the consequences. In that moment, 
Vincent knew there would be no reasoning with Zal. He caught Odin's eye and gave a subtle nod. As Zal's soldiers advanced, Vincent dove for cover, his hand slamming down on the control panel. The ship's engines roared to life, the sudden lurch sending the Vorta soldiers stumbling. Odin leapt into action, his fingers flying over the controls as he initiated an emergency launch sequence. Pulse rifle fire erupted around them, scorching the ship's hull. Vincent and Odin held on tight as the spacecraft blasted out of the hangar bay, the force of the acceleration pressing them back into their seats. We've got company, Odin shouted over the din of the engines. The ship's scanners lit up, revealing a squadron of Vorta military vessels in hot pursuit. Vincent's mind raced, his eyes scanning the star map for any advantage. A glimmer of an idea formed, and he quickly overlaid the map with the ship's tactical display. There! he said, pointing to a dense asteroid field. We can lose them in there. Odin glanced at the display, then back at Vincent. Are you sure about this? One wrong move and we'll be space dust. Vincent flashed him a grin. Good thing you've got a human at the helm. With a deft hand, Vincent guided the ship into the treacherous asteroid field. The ancient vessel wove through the tumbling rocks with breathtaking agility, its advanced shielding absorbing the impacts that couldn't be avoided. The Vorta ships, built for power rather than maneuverability, struggled to keep up. One by one they fell behind or were forced to break off, unwilling to risk destruction in the pursuit. As the last of the Vorta vessels faded from the scanners, Vincent and Odin let out a collective breath. They looked at each other, the magnitude of their narrow escape sinking in. That was some flying, Odin said, a hint of admiration in his voice. Vincent shrugged, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Just doing what I do best. With the immediate danger behind them, Vincent and Odin turned their attention back to the star map and the uncharted system that held the key to their mission. As they plotted a course through the stars, they knew that their journey was far from over. The mysteries of the ancient human civilization continued to unravel before them, each new discovery bringing them closer to understanding the role they were meant to play in the coming conflict. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and Vincent and Odin were determined to see their mission through no matter the cost. As the ancient spacecraft drifted through the endless void of space, its sensors suddenly pinged with an alert. Vincent, his eyes glued to the scanner, leaned forward in his seat. We've got something, Odin. A ship, a drift, and it looks like it's taken some serious damage. Odin glanced at the readout, his brow furrowing. It's a Vorta merchant vessel, probably attacked by pirates. We should keep moving, Vincent. Our mission is too important to delay. But Vincent was already out of his seat, grabbing a medkit from the ship's storage compartment. We can't just leave them out there. They could be injured or worse. Odin sighed, knowing there was no stopping Vincent when his human compassion took over. Fine, but we make it quick. We've got an artifact to find and a galaxy to save. The ancient ship pulled alongside the damaged Vorta vessel, its airlock extending to form a seal. Vincent and Odin, weapons at the ready, stepped through the hatch and into the eerie silence of the crippled ship. He signaled to Odin, and together they moved towards the sound their footsteps echoing through the empty passageways. They found the survivors huddled in a small cargo hold, their faces etched with fear and desperation. Among them was a young Vorta girl, her leg twisted at an unnatural angle. Vincent knelt beside her, his voice soft and reassuring. It's okay. We're here to help. The girl, who introduced herself as Lyra, looked up at Vincent with wide, frightened eyes. The pirates... They came out of nowhere. My parents. As Vincent tended to Lyra's injuries, Odin set about assessing the damage to the ship. It was clear that the Vorta vessel was beyond repair, its life support systems failing, and its engines nothing more than twisted scrap. With a heavy heart, Vincent made the decision to bring the survivors aboard the ancient ship. Odin, though initially hesitant, recognized the importance of the gesture, it was a chance to build a bridge between their species, to show that even in the darkest of times, 
compassion and unity could light the way. As the survivors settled into their new quarters, Vincent found himself spending more and more time with Lyra. He told her stories of Earth, of the wonders of his homeworld, and the strength of the human spirit. In turn, Lyra shared tales of Vorta history and culture, opening Vincent's eyes to the rich tapestry of life that existed beyond the stars. The ancient ship's AI, its curiosity piqued by the interactions between the organic lifeforms on board, began to take a more active role in the care of the survivors. It used its advanced medical technology to heal the injured, its soothing voice providing comfort to those who had lost everything. As the ship journeyed on, the bonds between Vincent, Odin and the survivors grew stronger. They were no longer just allies in a fight against an unknown enemy, but a family forged in the crucible of adversity. But even as they found solace in each other's company, the spectre of the impending threat loomed large. The ship's sensors, ever vigilant, detected a massive energy signature emanating from a nearby planet as they neared the uncharted system. The AI's analysis was clear. The signature matched that of the ancient artifact they sought. But there was a catch. The planet was heavily guarded by Vorta military forces, their presence a stark reminder of the dangers that lay ahead. Vincent and Odin, their faces grim with determination, knew that they couldn't risk a direct confrontation. The lives of the survivors, of Lyra and the others who had come to depend on them, hung in the balance. They huddled around the ship's holographic display, the AI projecting a detailed map of the planet's surface. Together, they began to formulate a plan, a way to infiltrate the Vorta defenses and secure the artifact without putting the survivors in harm's way. It would be a mission unlike any they had faced before, a test of their skills, their resolve and the strength of the bonds they had forged. But as Vincent looked around at the faces of his newfound family, he knew that failure was not an option. The fate of the galaxy and the future of all those he held dear rested on their shoulders, and they would not let them down. Vincent and Odin hunched over the ancient ship's control panel, their faces illuminated by the holographic displays. They pored over schematics of Vorta military vessels, searching for a design they could mimic. There, Odin said, pointing to a sleek, angular craft, a Vorta reconnaissance ship, lightly armed but with advanced stealth capabilities. It's our best chance of slipping past their defenses. Vincent nodded, his fingers already dancing across the interface. I'll activate the cloaking device and reconfigure our ship's external appearance. You handle the communication protocols and transponder codes. They worked in tandem, their movements precise and purposeful. The ship shimmered and shifted, its exterior morphing to match the Vorta design. Odin input a series of commands, aligning their signature with Vorta frequencies. We're ready, Vincent said, his hand hovering over the ignition. Let's hope this works. The ship sliced through the planet's atmosphere, its cloaking device rendering it nearly invisible. Vorta patrol ships glided past, unaware of the intruder in their midst. As they approached the surface, Vincent guided the ship towards a dense forested region near the energy signature's location. The landing was smooth, the ship settling into a small clearing amidst towering alien trees. Vincent and Odin gathered their gear, checking their weapons and equipment. They paused at the airlock, their eyes meeting. The survivors will be safe here under the AI's protection, Odin reassured. Our focus now is the artifact. Vincent clasped Odin's shoulder. We've come this far together. Let's finish this. They stepped out into the alien jungle, the humid air thick with unfamiliar scents. The canopy above thrummed with the calls of strange creatures, while bioluminescent plants cast an eerie glow. As they trekked deeper into the undergrowth, a rustling in the foliage made them freeze. A pair of glowing eyes peered out from the shadows, followed by another and another. Slowly the creatures emerged, sleek, muscular forms that resembled a cross between a wolf and a reptile. Their scales shimmered with iridescent hues and their teeth gleamed in the dim light. Vincent and Odin raised their weapons ready to defend themselves, but Vincent hesitated, sensing something in the creature's stance that gave him pause. 
He lowered his gun and stepped forward, his hands open in a gesture of peace. The creatures watched him warily, their tails swishing. Vincent reached out with his mind, projecting thoughts of friendship and trust. He had always had a way with animals, a connection that ran deeper than words. The creature in the lead cocked its head, its eyes narrowing. Then slowly it took a step forward, sniffing Vincent's outstretched hand. Odin watched in amazement as the creature nuzzled against Vincent's palm, a low purr emanating from its throat. The others followed suit, their postures relaxing. They're called the Kala, Vincent said, his voice soft with wonder. They're the guardians of this place and of the artifact we seek. The Kala leader stepped forward, its eyes locked on Vincent's. A series of images flashed through Vincent's mind. A hidden temple, an ancient prophecy, and a power that could save the galaxy. They've been waiting for us, Vincent said, turning to Odin. The heart of unity, that's what they call it. We're the chosen ones, meant to claim it and use its power for good. Odin's eyes widened. The heart of unity, the artifact we've been searching for. The Kala leader turned, beckoning for them to follow. Vincent and Odin fell into step behind the creatures, their hearts pounding with anticipation. The jungle grew denser as they walked, the air heavy with the weight of ancient secrets. The Kala moved with grace and purpose, their steps sure and silent. Finally they reached a clearing, and the breath caught in Vincent's throat. Before them stood a temple, its walls overgrown with vines and its entrance flanked by crumbling stone guardians. The Kala leader placed a clawed hand on the temple door, and with a groan it swung open. Vincent and Odin stepped inside, their footsteps echoing in the cavernous space. In the center of the temple, a pedestal rose from the floor, and atop it, a shimmering orb pulsed with energy. The heart of unity. Vincent reached out, his fingers mere inches from the artifact, but before he could touch it, the sound of pulse rifle fire shattered the silence. Commander Zal strode into the temple, his face twisted with triumphant rage. Step away from the artifact, human. It belongs to the Vorta now. Vorta soldiers poured into the temple, their weapons trained on Vincent and Odin. The Kala snarled, their hackles raising. Vincent and Odin moved instinctively, diving for cover behind the stone pillars. Pulse blasts scorched the walls, sending chunks of ancient masonry flying. The Kala leapt into action, their claws and teeth flashing as they tore into the Vorta ranks. Their camouflage abilities allowed them to blend seamlessly with the temple's shadows, striking with deadly precision. Vincent and Odin fought back, their own weapons blazing. They moved as one, covering each other's blind spots and taking down soldiers with ruthless efficiency. But the Vorta kept coming, their numbers seemingly endless. Vincent gritted his teeth, his muscles burning with exertion. Suddenly a cry of pain cut through the chaos. Vincent turned to see Odin crumple to the ground, a sizzling hole in his chest from a Vorta energy blast. Odin! Vincent screamed, his voice raw with anguish. He lunged towards his fallen friend, but a hail of pulse fire drove him back. Odin lay motionless, his life force fading. Something snapped inside Vincent, a dam bursting within his soul. He felt a surge of power course through his veins, ancient and primal. He turned towards the heart of unity, his eyes blazing with an otherworldly light. The artifact pulsed in response, its energy flowing into Vincent's body. Vincent rose to his feet, his form shimmering with an aura of pure, radiant energy. The Vorta soldiers faltered, their eyes wide with fear. Vincent lashed out, bolts of energy leaping from his fingertips. Vorta soldiers flew backwards, their armor shattering like glass. Commander Zal roared with fury, charging towards Vincent with his pulse rifle blazing. But Vincent met him head on, a shockwave of power erupting from his body. Zal crumpled to the ground, his weapon clattering uselessly beside him. The remaining Vorta soldiers dropped their rifles, their hands raised in surrender. Vincent stumbled to Odin's side, the energy around him fading. He cradled his friend's head in his lap, tears streaming down his face. But the heart of unity pulsed once more, and a warm golden light enveloped Odin's body. 
His wounds began to close, the charred flesh knitting back together. Odin's eyes fluttered open and he gasped, his lungs filling with air. Vincent laughed through his tears, his heart soaring with relief. The Kala leader approached, its eyes shining with respect. It placed a clawed hand on Vincent's shoulder, and a series of images flashed through his mind. The Kala had seen his true nature, the power within him that marked him as a guardian of the heart of unity. They entrusted the artifact to his care, charging him with the sacred duty of protecting the galaxy from the impending threat. Vincent stood tall, the heart of unity cradled in his hands. He turned to Odin, his eyes shining with determination. We have a lot of work to do, my friend. The galaxy needs us now more than ever. Odin nodded, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Then let's get started, Guardian. The future awaits. As the ancient ship's airlock hissed open, Vincent and Odin stepped inside, the heart of unity pulsing with energy in Vincent's hands. The survivors, their faces alight with hope and wonder, gathered around them, eager to hear of their success. Lyra pushed through the crowd, her eyes wide as she caught sight of the artifact. Is that it? The key to saving us all? The AI's avatar materialized before them, its form shimmering with excitement. Guardian Vincent, the heart of unity, is more than just a power source. It is the key to unlocking the full potential of this ship and the ancient human technology within. Vincent looked down at the artifact, its surface thrumming with untapped potential. Show me what I need to do. As Vincent placed his hands on the control panel, the artifact flared to life, and a rush of energy surged through his body. His mind expanded, merging with the ship's AI and accessing the vast stores of knowledge and memories contained within. Visions flashed before his eyes, the triumphs and struggles of the ancient human civilization, their sacrifices made to protect the galaxy from a malevolent force. He saw great battles fought, alliances forged, and worlds saved from the brink of destruction. And with each passing moment, Vincent gained a deeper understanding of the threat they now faced, and the role he was meant to play in stopping it. In another part of the ship, Odin stood before a restrained commander, Zal, his eyes narrowed with determination. The Vorta truth-seeking device, a sleek headset equipped with advanced neural scanners, rested on the table between them. You will tell me everything you know about the infiltration of the Vorta High Council, Odin said, his voice low and dangerous. Zal sneered, his eyes darting to the device. You think your little toy can make me talk? Odin leaned forward, his gaze unwavering. It's not a toy, Zal, it's a tool for uncovering the truth, and one way or another you will give us the answers we seek. He placed the headset on Zal's head, the device whirring to life as it delved into the commander's mind. Zal's eyes widened, then glazed over as the truth-seeking technology did its work. Bit by bit, the story unfolded. The agents of the malevolent race, their insidious influence on the Vorta government, and the suppression of knowledge about the ancient humans and the true nature of the threat. Odin's heart raced as the pieces fell into place. The corruption ran deeper than they had ever imagined, and the stakes were higher than ever before. As the interrogation ended, Odin removed the headset, his mind reeling with the implications of what he had learned, he met Vincent in the ship's main hall, their eyes locking in a silent exchange of understanding. The Vorta High Council has been compromised, Odin said, his voice grave. We're not just fighting an external threat, but an enemy within. Vincent nodded, the weight of their task settling on his shoulders. Then we'll need more than just the two of us to set things right. We'll need allies, evidence, and the support of both our peoples. As they prepared to depart the planet, the Kala leader approached, a shimmering crystal held aloft in its clawed hands. Take this, guardians, it said, its voice resonating with ancient wisdom. This crystal carries the essence of our ancestral knowledge, and it will guide you in the battles to come. Vincent accepted the crystal, feeling its weight and power thrumming through his fingertips. He met Odin's gaze, a spark of determination flaring between them. 
With the Heart of Unity, the ancient ship, and the Kala's crystal in their possession, they set course for the stars, ready to gather the forces they needed to confront the malevolent race and restore balance to the galaxy. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with danger and challenges, but together they would face whatever lay in store. The ancient ship slipped through the void of space, its cloaking device rendering it invisible to prying eyes. Vincent stood on the bridge, his gaze fixed on the holographic display before him. The Nexus loomed ahead, a sprawling space station that served as a hub for the galaxy's myriad civilizations. Odin's fingers danced across the control panel, guiding the ship towards the station's docking bay. We'll need to be careful, he warned. The Nexus is a hotbed of intrigue and deception. We can't trust anyone. Vincent nodded, his jaw set. Agreed, but we have to start somewhere. As the ship docked, its cloaking device shimmered and faded, revealing its sleek, angular form. Vincent and Odin disembarked, their senses on high alert as they stepped into the bustling concourse. Suddenly a hooded figure stepped out from the shadows, beckoning them to follow. Vincent and Odin exchanged a glance before falling into step behind the mysterious figure. They were led through a maze of narrow corridors, the station's neon lights flickering overhead. Finally they reached a nondescript door, which slid open to reveal a dimly lit room. Inside a group of Vorta stood waiting, their faces etched with determination. One of them, a tall, lean male with piercing eyes, stepped forward. I am Raven, he said, his voice low and urgent. We've been expecting you. Vincent and Odin shared their findings with Raven and his rebels, detailing the corruption within the Vorta government and the looming threat of the Kuroks. Raven listened intently, his expression growing grimmer with each revelation. We've long suspected something was amiss, he said, his voice tight with anger but we never imagined the rot ran so deep. Vincent placed a hand on Raven's shoulder, his eyes blazing with determination. We can stop this, Raven, but we need your help. Raven nodded, his own eyes mirroring Vincent's resolve. You have it. We'll stand with you no matter the cost. As the alliance between the humans and the rebel Vorta grew, Raven introduced Vincent and Odin to representatives of other ancient races. The Eldari, tall and ethereal, radiated an aura of wisdom and power. The Kraga, heavily muscled and scarred from countless battles, exuded a fierce, unyielding spirit. Together, they learned the true nature of their enemy. The Kuroks, a parasitic race that fed on the life force of entire civilizations, had been manipulating the galaxy for eons, weakening its defenses in preparation for their ultimate conquest. Their main weapon, a massive, sentient ship known as the Devourer, had the power to consume entire planets, absorbing their energy and leaving nothing but lifeless husks in its wake. Vincent's heart pounded as he realized the true extent of the ancient humans' sacrifice. They had not only hidden their technology, but had also sealed away the Devourer in a pocket dimension, preventing it from wreaking havoc on the galaxy. But now... The Kurok's agents were working to weaken the seal, to unleash their ultimate weapon upon an unsuspecting galaxy. Vincent's mind raced as he and Odin devised a plan to strike at the heart of the Kurok's stronghold to prevent them from unleashing the Devourer. They began to gather their forces, each allied race contributing their unique skills and resources to the cause. As they prepared for the final battle, Vincent found himself reflecting on the journey that had brought him to this moment. He thought of Odin, his steadfast friend and ally, of Lyra, the young Vorta girl who had taught him so much about compassion and resilience. He thought of the other allies he had met along the way, each one a shining example of the strength that could be found in unity and self-sacrifice. And he realized that the true power of humanity lay not only in their technology and adaptability, but in their capacity for empathy, for understanding, for forging bonds that transcended the boundaries of species and culture. With renewed determination, Vincent stood tall, ready to face the Kuroks and save the galaxy from their clutches. He knew the battle ahead would be the greatest challenge he had ever faced, but he also knew that he would not face it alone. Together, 
They would stand against the darkness, a beacon of hope in a galaxy on the brink of destruction. Vincent turned to Odin, his voice low and urgent. Gather the allies. Inform them we move against the Kuroks in two cycles this ends now. Odin nodded grimly. He activated his communicator and began relaying instructions to the Allied fleet amassing in a nearby star system, safely out of the prying eyes of Vorta patrols. Vincent turned back to the holographic star map hovering in the center of the ancient ship's bridge. The location of the Kurok stronghold pulsed an angry red. The AI had managed to extrapolate its position based on the information extracted from Zahal and cross-referenced with the ancient knowledge stored in its databanks. It would not be an easy assault. The stronghold was nestled in the heart of a dense nebula, surrounded by gravitic anomalies and radiation storms that would wreak havoc on their ship's systems. And that was before the Kurok's fleet protecting the station, a formidable armada of nightmarish biosynthetic warships, each one a twisted fusion of organic and inorganic components, pulsing with malevolent energy. But they had to succeed. The fate of the galaxy depended on it. Vincent's eyes hardened with resolve as he studied the fortress's schematics, searching for any weakness they could exploit. Every race in their newfound alliance had provided what intelligence they had on Kurok's technology and tactics. Combined with the ancient knowledge provided by the AI and the Kala's crystal, they had started formulating an attack plan. It would require split-second timing, flawless execution, and no small amount of luck. But Vincent had faith in his allies, in the bonds they had forged through shared hardship and sacrifice. He thought back to a conversation he had with Lyra the night before, as they stood in the ship's observation deck, gazing out at the stars. Do you think we can do this? Lyra had asked, her voice small and uncertain. Defeat the Kuroks, I mean. Vincent had placed a comforting hand on her shoulder, his voice soft but filled with conviction. We have to, Lyra, for the sake of everyone in the galaxy, for the sake of all those who sacrificed so much to give us this chance. Lyra had looked up at him then, her eyes shining with a fierce determination that belied her youth. I'm ready to fight, Vincent, for my people, for our future, for the family I found in you and Odin. Vincent had smiled then, his heart swelling with pride and affection for the brave young Vorta. They were more than allies now, more than friends. They were a family, bound by ties stronger than blood. And it was for his family that Vincent would fight, with every ounce of strength and conviction he possessed. He turned back to the holographic display, his eyes tracing the pulsing red light of the Kurok stronghold. One way or another, this war would end there, in the heart of the enemy's power. He just prayed that when the dust settled and the smoke cleared, there would still be a galaxy left to save. The Allied fleet, a motley assortment of Vorta, Eldari, Krager and rebel ships, dropped out of warp at the edge of the Kurok stronghold's sensor range. Vincent stood on the bridge of the ancient ship, his eyes fixed on the holographic display of their target, a twisted mass of dark metal and pulsing organic tendrils nestled in the heart of a roiling nebula. All ships report in, he said, his voice steady over the comms. One by one, the fleet commanders signaled their readiness, their resolve hardened by the knowledge of what was at stake. Odin placed a hand on Vincent's shoulder. We're with you, Vincent, to the end. Vincent nodded, a grim smile on his face. Let's show these bastards what happens when you mess with the galaxy. The fleet surged forward, the ancient ship at its head. As they neared the stronghold, the Kurok's defenses came to life, a swarm of writhing biomechanical fighters pouring from the station's launch bays. The battle was joined, the void of space alight with the flare of energy weapons and the silent explosions of dying ships. The ancient ship's advanced weaponry tore through the Kurok's fighters, its shields shrugging off their return fire. Vincent and Odin watched the tactical display, directing their forces with calm precision. The Eldari ships danced through the battlefield, their graceful movements belying their deadly accuracy. The Kragor vessels, heavily armored and bristling with guns, plowed through the enemy ranks, shrugging off damage and dealing out destruction in equal measure. 
and the rebel Vorta, their ships modified with scrounge tech and sheer determination, fought with a ferocity born of years of oppression and betrayal. As the battle raged, Vincent turned to Odin. It's time, we need to get to the heart of the station and stop the Devourer's release. Odin nodded, already moving towards the hangar bay. I'll assemble the strike team, meet you at the shuttle in five. The strike team, a mix of the best fighters from each allied race, boarded the shuttle, their faces grim with determination. Vincent took the controls, guiding the small craft through the chaos of the battle, dodging debris and energy blasts with preternatural skill. They landed in the stronghold's hangar, the shuttle's ramp lowering to reveal a scene of chaos. Kurok soldiers swarmed the bay, their twisted forms bristling with organic weapons. Vincent and Odin led the charge, their weapons blazing as they fought their way deeper into the station. The Eldari moved with fluid grace, their energy blades slicing through the enemy with ease. The Kragur waded into the fray, their massive forms shrugging off the Kurok's attacks as they crushed their foes with brutal efficiency. And the rebel Vorta, armed with stolen Kurok's tech, sowed confusion and discord among the enemy ranks, their intimate knowledge of the station's layout giving them a crucial advantage. As they neared the station's core, a massive explosion rocked the facility, sending the strike team stumbling. Vincent's calm crackled to life, Raven's voice tight with strain. Vincent Zal's loose. He's sabotaging the power core. You need to hurry. Vincent gritted his teeth, pushing forward with renewed urgency. They burst into the core chamber, the sight before them stopping them in their tracks. Commander Zal stood before the pulsing mass of the power core, his form twisted and corrupted by Kurok's technology. He turned to face them, a manic grin on his face. You're too late, he rasped, his voice a metallic screech. The Devourer will be freed and the Kuroks will feast on the bones of the galaxy. Vincent stepped forward, the heart of unity glowing in his hand. Not if I have anything to say about it. Izal laughed, a sound of pure madness. You think you can stop us human? You're nothing but a primitive ape playing with forces beyond your comprehension. Vincent's eyes narrowed. I may be human, but I carry the legacy of a civilization that fought and died to protect the galaxy, and I will not let their sacrifice be in vain. He raised the heart of unity, its light pulsing in time with his heartbeat. Zal snarled, his form shifting and warping as he channeled the Kurox's dark energy. The two clashed, their powers meeting in a blinding flash of light and shadow. The chamber shook with the force of their struggle, the very fabric of reality warping around them. Odin and the others watched in awe, their weapons forgotten as they witnessed the titanic battle unfolding before them. Vincent pushed forward, the heart of Unity's light growing brighter with each passing moment. He could feel the Kala's crystal thrumming in his pocket, its ancient wisdom guiding his actions. Zal faltered, his form flickering as Vincent's power overwhelmed his own. With a final desperate cry, he lunged forward, his claws aimed at Vincent's heart. But Vincent was faster, his hand darting out to catch Zal's wrist in an unbreakable grip. He looked into the Vorta's eyes, seeing the madness and corruption that had consumed him. I'm sorry, he whispered, his voice heavy with sorrow, but I can't let you doom the galaxy. With a final surge of power, Vincent channeled the heart of Unity's energy through Zal's body, burning away the Kurok's taint and reducing the Vorta to ashes. As the light faded, Vincent turned to the others, his face grim. We need to get to the Devourer's Chamber. It's the only way to stop this once and for all. They raced through the station's corridors, the sound of battle echoing all around them. They burst into the chamber, a vast cavernous space dominated by a swirling vortex of dark energy. At the center of the maelstrom, a massive pulsing form hung suspended the Devourer, a being of pure malevolence and hunger. And before it stood the Overlord, its form a twisted mockery of life, its eyes burning with an ancient insatiable hunger. Welcome, Guardians, it hissed, its voice a sibilant whisper that echoed through their minds. You are just in time to witness the beginning of the end. Vincent stepped forward, the heart of unity pulsing in his hand. 
We're here to stop you, Overlord. The galaxy will never be yours to devour. The Overlord laughed, a sound that chilled them to the bone. Foolish human. You cannot stop the inevitable. The Devourer will consume all, and the Kuroks will reign supreme. Vincent shook his head. Not while I still draw breath. The two forces clashed, the very air shimmering with the intensity of their struggle. The Overlord's darkness lashed out, seeking to smother Vincent's light, to consume him as it had consumed countless worlds before. But Vincent held firm, his will unbreakable, his power fueled by the sacrifices of the ancient humans and the hopes of the allied races. Slowly, inexorably, he pushed the Overlord back, the creature's form flickering and fading as its power waned. With a final desperate cry, the Overlord lunged forward, its claws seeking to rip the heart of unity from Vincent's grasp. But Vincent was ready, his free hand darting out to seize the Overlord's throat. He looked into the creature's eyes, seeing the bottomless hunger and insatiable greed that had driven it for eons. He channeled the full power of the Heart of Unity into the Overlord's form, the creature's scream of agony echoing through the chamber as it was consumed by the blinding light. As the Overlord's ashes drifted to the floor, Vincent turned to the others, his face grim. It's not over yet, we need to seal the pocket dimension or the Devourer will break free. Odin stepped forward, his eyes wide with understanding. Vincent, no, you can't... Vincent smiled, a sad, weary expression. I have to, Odin, it's the only way. Tears streamed down Odin's face as he clasped Vincent's hand. I promise, my friend, your legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of all who knew you. Vincent nodded, his eyes shining with gratitude. He turned to face the swirling vortex, the heart of unity glowing brighter than ever before. Goodbye, my friends. May the stars guide your path. With a final, defiant cry, Vincent leapt into the maelstrom, the heart of unity's light enveloping him in a blinding aura of power. The vortex writhed and twisted, the fabric of space and time straining against the immense forces at play, and then, with a final, deafening roar, it collapsed in on itself, the pocket dimension sealing shut forever, taking Vincent and the Devourer with it. Odin fell to his knees, his shoulders shaking with grief. Around him, the others bowed their heads, their own tears mingling with the dust and debris of the shattered chamber. In the days that followed, the allied races came together to mourn Vincent's sacrifice and celebrate the victory he had won for them all. Odin took up the mantle of leadership, his words of unity and compassion echoing through the halls of power on a hundred worlds. The Vorta freed from the corruption of the High Council, embraced a new era of transparency and equality, with Raven at the helm of a new, just government. The Eldari and Kraga, once isolated and distrustful, became valued allies and friends, their wisdom and strength helping to rebuild the shattered worlds left in the Kurox's wake. And as the galaxy began to heal, as new bonds of friendship and understanding were forged across the stars, Odin could not help but smile through his tears. For he knew that Vincent's spirit lived on, in the laughter of children playing in the streets of rebuilt cities, in the songs of hope and joy that echoed through the night, in the hearts of all those who had been touched by his courage and compassion. And he knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, the united races of the galaxy would face them together, guided by the memory of a humble human who had given everything to save them all. Odin stood on the observation deck of the ancient ship, his eyes fixed on the stars beyond. The war was over, the Kuroks defeated, the galaxy safe at last. But the price had been high, too high. He thought of Vincent, of the brave, selfless man who had become his brother in all but blood, the man who had sacrificed everything to seal away the devourer and save them all. Odin's heart ached with the weight of his loss, with the knowledge that he would never again see Vincent's smile, never again hear his laughter. But even as he mourned, he knew that Vincent's legacy would live on. In the unity of the allied races, in the bonds of friendship and understanding that now stretched across the stars. Odin turned as Lyra entered the observation deck, her eyes red with tears. She had taken Vincent's loss hard, 
the pain of losing her mentor and friend a raw, aching wound. But as she looked out at the stars, as she saw the beauty and wonder of the galaxy they had fought so hard to save, a small smile touched her lips. He would have loved this, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion, seeing the galaxy at peace, knowing that his sacrifice made it possible. Odin nodded, his own eyes shining with unshed tears. He would have, and he would have been so proud of you, Lyra, of the woman you've become. Lyra leaned into Odin's embrace, drawing strength from his presence. Together they stood in silence, watching the stars dance across the endless expanse of space. And in that moment, Odin knew that Vincent's spirit was with them, guiding them, watching over them. And a promise of the bright future that lay ahead, a future that Vincent had given his life to make possible. Odin smiled, his heart swelling with pride and determination. He would honor Vincent's memory, he would carry on his legacy. And together with his allies, with the united races of the galaxy, he would build a better tomorrow. A tomorrow filled with hope, with laughter, with the endless possibilities of a galaxy at peace. Their tomorrow that would forever bear the mark of Vincent's sacrifice and the enduring spirit of humanity. Odin turned to Lyra, his eyes bright with purpose. Come on, let's get back to work. We have a galaxy to rebuild. Lyra nodded, her own eyes shining with determination. Together they left the observation deck, ready to face the challenges ahead. Ready to build the future that Vincent had dreamed of, the future he had given everything to make possible. The future that would be his legacy, his gift to the galaxy he had loved so much. And as they walked, Odin could almost hear Vincent's voice whispering in his ear. Well done, my friend, well done. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.